It's a topic that in many parts of the world is not even an issue nowadays, but in Argentina, far end of the world, uh, it's a, a kind of topic trend nowadays. Will Argentina, will, will liberal democrat, uh, democracy survive in Argentina without an independent judiciary? As you all might know, this is the Supreme Court of Justice, um, the courts in Argentina. As you might know, um, our constitution, which was copied from the United States Constitution, uh, states three branches, the legislative, the executive, and the judiciary branch, which is supposed to be independent and strong. And for me, the most important uh, branch of the government. But unfortunately, during the last 10 years, but I would rather say uh, most strongly the last two years, our president, who happens to be a lawyer, but seems to have forgotten what she studied, if she studied, um, <laughs> has um, set out quite a wide range of measures that uh, tend to cripple down independence of judiciary and uh, really jeopardize our daily work. I mean, judges and prosecutors. First of all, she started by changing the, the way the Council of Magistrates is, um, is formed. So now we have a ma most of them um, are representatives of the political parties. So of course, if you are from the party, you are going to have a very good uh, job. And if you are not, and if, moreover, if you try to investigate the rampant corruption around the president and her um, family members and political allies, you're going to be immediately uh, sanctioned or more, more um, or worst of all, removed from your, from your um, position. Um, this has um, had outrageous um, examples. For example, I have a very good friend of mine who won tw 21 times uh, several positions for judges, and he was not um, called for occupying that because he's not um, He's, of, of course, he's apolitical, he's, uh, we, as we have to be, uh, I feel we have to be that way. Um, after that, she um, put in the position of general attorney a woman whose only merit was to be loyal to the president and to the president's wishes. She has no background, and of course, all prosecutors now, if you don't belong to her line, to political line, our work is really in jeopardy. As you might have seen, the worst uh, thing of all was the death um, of a prosecutor after he denounced the president for having subscribed an illegal uh, deal with Iran. He had to um, present himself at, the, uh, at a commission of the Congress, and he was found dead uh, the night previous to that at his home, shot with no suicide note. Of course, we went out of the streets, lots of people, but eight months ha have ha passed, and we still don't know what happened to him. This is all of us. It says um, silent march. We were going through the Congress and then to the, to the, um, to the house of the president, like our uh, White House, which is pink, in fact. <laughs> um, <laughs> After that, she set an illegal commission within the parliament to try to prosecute the oldest member of the Supreme Court of Justice, which is a, a Judge Fight, 83 years old, one of the most brilliant uh, judges we ha we'd had in our history. And uh, ruling out what the Constitution said, she set a, uh, an illegal commission. Again, incredible. She doesn't care what the Constitution says. The worst thing of all is that she created the, what is called a, a, an organization within the, the judiciary branch called Justicia Legitima or Legitimate Justice, as if the ones who don't belong there are illegitimate. <laughs> and if you don't belong to that, okay, your daily life is going to be quite stressful. Um, this is uh, the AMIA building with, where there was a um, a bombing attempt 20 years ago, and this prosecutor had denounced the president because of, of her deal with Iran. It's a very long story, and I don't have so much time, but I can talk about it later. So that's the picture. It's a very dark 
very stressful picture. Um, I have a long career. I'm not going to tell how long because you're going to make numbers about my age, but it's more than 20 years. <laughs> and I've never been such, I have never seen such a dark picture, never suffered what prosecutors and judges are suffering nowadays. Believe me, it's very, very difficult. So how do I deal with it, with this? How do I work every day? And in fact, I wanted to quit several times. I, sometimes I feel, feel very tired of this. Ironically, when they appointed me in charge of the cybercrime unit, this gave me a, like a new breath because being in charge of, of those crimes, which most of them are related with child pornography, gave me like um, a new start because child pornography is one of the worst human rights abuses I have ever seen in my life. Believe me, I have a long career, I've witnessed a lot of so, uh, sexual assaults, robbery, murders, but dealing with child abuses, it's very hard. My team has a psychological support, which I ask them uh, especially for, because this was not, um, they, they hadn't think about that. So every day when I think that I can go uh, and prosecute people who commit these horrible crimes, for me, it's like I feel, okay, this is very bad, we are doing very b bad things, but I can still believe that my work is important, I can still believe that I can make the difference every day, and at least for the victim who is with me at court, it's gonna be like a new start. Thank you very much.